Hey, I'm back. And I'm going to talk about the upcoming Karate Kid 4K collection that includes the first three Karate Kid films. Uh, they released uh, a while back the original Karate Kid on uh, 4K. It is the 4K plus uh, Blu-ray plus digital. That's what uh, this uh, box set is. It's got great it's got great artwork. It's the uh, individual cases are the original poster art for all three films. Uh, if you had to ask me, my favorite uh, out of the uh, Daniel Russo uh, trilogy is the first two films. The third one, Soul Soul. Uh, I know uh, a friend of mine that is a big movie lover. Uh, we talked about it quite a few years ago. Uh, he had said it's more like a remake because they go back to the All Valley Karate Tournament. Uh, of course, you can't replace the original Cobra Kai uh, members. Uh, it it sucks. You get a guy like you know Mike Barnes, and I just watched a clip not too long ago. I did not know uh, the scene where him and Daniel, Mike Barnes versus Daniel Russo in that scene uh, where, you know, you got Kreese and uh, Terry Silver watching and the way Mike Barnes was basically trash talking Daniel and, you know, talking about, you know, that Miyagi, his teachers, junkies, you know, just some of the things towards Miyagi, I, to me it felt like very, very racial. Uh, of course, you know, I mean, how hardcore, you know, was uh, Mike, Mike Barnes anyway? It was very, very hardcore. Uh, the thing I did like about Karate Kid Part 3 is that we get uh, Robin Lively in the film. Now, her character really wasn't a love interest for uh, Daniel Russo. Uh, basically, she basically gets back uh, together with her ex-boyfriend while they were, you know, talking and then she was only a limited time in, uh, uh, I think it was in Reseda. Well, not, no, not Reseda, but, uh, oh, I can't remember now what, uh, town that, uh, Daniel and, uh, Miyagi are living in. I know it's, I believe it's in California, I want to say. Uh, it's, it, it's been a while since I've seen the films, but, uh, anyways, she decides she's going to go back uh, uh, living back in, I, th I think it was in Iowa, or Ohio, no, Ohio, I believe that's what it was. Uh, she was going to leave uh, right around Thanksgiving, and, you know, basically they end up becoming friends. Well, uh, the whole scene, the whole reasoning to that, why there wasn't a love, a love interest, was... Because uh, I didn't find this out because uh, Days of the Dead Chicago, uh, Robin Lively is going to be a guest there. And they had like a, a description as to why she, there wasn't a love interest in uh, Karate Kid 3. Well, uh, Ralph Macho was 27 and uh, Robin Lively was 16 at the time. So they, they, that's why they couldn't didn't do a love a, a love relationship in the film um, but anyways besides that I, th I thought that was the standout for me for uh, Karate Kid 3 I liked it it you know the whole Karate Kid uh, trilogy or franchise if you want to include the next Karate Kid in there as well which I'm surprised it didn't make it on to the box set but it to me this is the Daniel LaRusso uh, trilogy and um, the thing is, with Karate Kid 3, 2, and 1, you know, you, you can learn a lot from movies, and these films are really great from, like, life, life learning lessons, you know, about being bullied. Me and Daniel have, uh, a lot in common, and, of course, he, uh, knew his father, but his father had died. I knew my father, too. Uh, my father was, you know, basically up and left out of my life 
for, you know, unforeseen reasons. And then, you know, I found out back in 2014, my father passed away. Uh, you know, the thing is with, uh, the thing is going back with, you know, the Karate Kid trilogy or, you know, the Karate Kid franchise, uh, there are some life lessons in there, you know, being bullied and, you know, going through all, going through the whole things of being bullied and being made fun of. And then, you know, meeting a uh, handyman in an apartment complex where you're living at and not knowing that he is a karate master, but, you know, he was teaching Daniel how to, you know, uh, send the floor. Wax on, wax off. He was actually teaching him, you know, the martial arts. He didn't, Daniel didn't know that. But then one night he, he shows him and show me sand the floor. Show me uh, wax on, wax off. Show me paint, I think it's paint the fence. Uh, like I said, it's been a while since I've seen the, uh, the, uh, the, the films. To me, that it just, you know, part one holds uh, something very special because it came out the year I was born. Um, you get to part two, oh man, this one is so emotional, because this is actually uh, Miyagi's story uh, as to why he left Okinawa, and, you know, he loved, he left a love interest behind, and, uh, of course, Daniel meets a new love interest within uh, Kumi, Kumiko, who was played by uh, the very beautiful uh, Tamla Tomita, and, uh, I just, you know, love the story for this. And, you know, you would almost think it was filmed in the actual Okinawa. It wasn't. It was in Hawaii, if I believe. I saw an interview on uh, YouTube with uh, Rock Maggio. And uh, they had to use Hawaii as Okinawa, which I thought was pretty cool how they got it down, pretty much. I mean, I've never seen uh, anything on Okinawa. I should look up some uh, videos on there see uh, but uh, yeah uh, part two is definitely definitely a great film and I know it near the I know at the end of the first film they didn't say the end but in the second one they did I thought that would have been I thought that would have been a great conclusion to the karate kid story because you told Daniel side in the first one get to the second one you're telling Miyagi side um, but either way, I mean, you didn't need a part three, but either way, you get to the first one, near the, at the end of the first one, there was nothing that, uh, hinted off that there was going to be a second film. Uh, same thing with part two. There was nothing hinted off that there was going to be a part three film. Uh, they could have been standalone films. Part one could have been just a standalone film. Part one and two could have been just that, and they didn't need a part three. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of both parts one and two. Like I said, three had a different tone to it. I mean, you get the return of, you know, John Kreese as one of the protagonists, but the main protagonist is Terry Silver. Uh, this guy basically tries to manipulate uh, Daniel Russo, and Daniel pretty much basically... Uh, uh, turns his back on Miyagi at a point and wants Terry Silver to train him and what Terry Silver is actually doing, they do reveal the plan and uh, to Daniel when uh, Daniel goes to the uh, uh, Cobra Kai dojo one night and you know, all of a sudden John Kreese pops up. Of course, Mike Barnes is there waiting for him and they're trying to humiliate Daniel, forcing him to sign the, uh, the contract the, the fight at the All Valley, and Daniel doesn't want to do it. Uh, but like I said, part three has a very strong message as well, is be careful of who you uh, get involved with, and it makes perfectly sense because a guy like Terry Silver, yeah, he came off nice, but he was not a nice guy at all. And, uh, you know, we get, we get people out there that pretend to be people's friends, but, you know, when they're really not. And they're out there to humiliate you and, you know, who knows what else they do, try to, you know, beat you up or whatnot. Um, 
I don't know what the beef is with a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people might have a different uh, different opinions on part three is why they don't like it. I didn't like it because it just... It wasn't because it didn't feel like, you know, hey, it was like a remake of the original film. Just the nostalgia for, for part three wasn't there like it was with the first two for me. Um, now, the box set that's coming out coming out December 7th. What I get it, it's running for like 49 something on Amazon. You know, I don't know if I'd get it. It took me a while to get the uh, trilogy set of uh, Back to the Future on 4K. It, it took me a while because I didn't get that right away when it came out or when it first came out. Uh, but for the, for the uh, Karate Kid uh, trilogy, I don't know. I don't know if I'd get it. Uh, the, the one thing I don't understand is, okay, you release the first film on 4K, but now you're coming out with a 4K trilogy of the first three films in a box set. Why don't we do it this way? Why don't we just go ahead, since we got the first one on 4K by itself, why don't we put out part two and part three individually like the first one did? I mean, I'd, I'd buy the first two films, and I'd say to heck with uh, three. Um, but like I said, the only point that I really liked about three was Robin uh, Lively being in the film, and uh, just, uh, you know, the the lesson that you learn with, you know, trusting somebody and trying, you know, go ahead, hey, I'm going to turn my back on uh, a friend of mine that's been helping me all these years just because, you know, someone else has got a better technique or whatnot and their attentions you don't know aren't good until you actually find out but uh anyways yeah i mean what are your thoughts on the uh karate kid uh 4k uh box set Would, are you gonna get it uh i'm i'm mixed on it i i really don't know but i mean i, I really love the first two films they are in my opinion the best in the uh karate kid franchise but that is it. That's all I got to talk about with this one. And uh, hey, let me let me know in the comments if you guys are gonna pick up the Karate Kid uh, 4K trilogy box set. Love to hear your thoughts, and I'll see you guys back here uh, next week. Bye bye.